At Bianchi Honda, we want to exceed your expectations for customer service. From our gorgeous showroom and accommodating staff to our extraordinary selection of Honda vehicles and industry-leading service department. Your vehicle should be the best choice for you, and you can find it here at Bianchi Honda. I'm Jason Perico, and I promise to always make it worth a visit. Good evening, everybody. James R. with Gannon University Coach Brad Rizicki, the Gannon Coaches Show for Football. Coach, seems like we just did this about a week or two ago. I am fired up. I hope you're fired up. Yeah, to me it seems a little bit longer, but yes, <laughs> it, camp has seemed long, so we're excited that it's actually game week and we actually get to play a game on Saturday. I know the kids are excited about it, but I think we spent some time together. But uh, yeah, it, it, it does feel a little bit like yesterday, but then again, it feels like a long time since we laced it up and played another team. Starting over, before we look at the Southern Connecticut University, let's look at the Golden Knights, a lot of new looks. It starts at uh, quarterback, they say, and we didn't have to discuss that much the last four years. We knew what it was going to be with uh, Liam Nadler. What was it like for you going into camp with a quarterback competition that apparently might still be going on? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, the one thing we wanted to do is bring in more competition, especially at that position. Um, it, it, we're going to be different. The same offense for the most part. I don't think it's a secret that we run zone read. Um, it wasn't Liam's forte for the most part, but, you know, Zach Phillips, who's, who came in and, and played, that's one thing he can do is run. So we wanted to bring another kid with some experience to be able to compete with Zach. And uh, Tyler Palk is the one that's been keep competing since spring and now all the way through camp to this point. And it's a really good situation for us to have. we got two kids that we think are extremely capable of getting this thing done. So it's been fun. I mean, we're not looking, to, we're not looking at this thing like uh, we can't find one to play. It's like how do we get both of these kids on the field at some certain point during the game. But... You know, I think we try to do that and reevaluate our team with every position to try to create some type of competition so that no one felt entitled to go on that field. And the kids have really embraced it, and I think that's part of the culture that we've developed over time. So the quarterback position is no different than any other position on the field, although us and, and everybody else know that that guy's getting the ball in every single play, so it's pretty important what we do out there. But it's been entertaining. I'm a, I'm a guy that loves competition, and that one to watch it, has been uh, really interesting, interesting and exciting to watch. Well, if it's kind of good enough for Notre Dame, it should be good enough for mm. uh, Gannon University. They, of course, they have co-quarterbacks. What have you made up your mind? Are you going to have a quarterback and stick with them, or will you? Will uh, the Gannon fans see two in one game? Well, I think that determines how the games, the course of the games go, and, and who we're playing. You know that. They're both very similar to, from a skill set standpoint, the fact that you know, they, could, they can get, a, get loose and run the ball, or they throw it, they both have strong arms, so they're very similar, um, but you know, they're very capable. I, I think as time goes on, uh, we spoke with the guys recently, and you know, Ty, Tyler Palk is a great kid. He came in this program, he competed extremely well with Zach, and, and I think the fact that Zach has been in the program for two years really helped along the process, so going into Saturday, we're going to put Zach Phillips out there and, and let him go. And, uh, you know, I, I think during the course of the game, depending on how the game goes, you know, Tyler Palka may get his shot to get out there. But, you know, we're, we're going to ride with Zach, Zach right now. He's, uh, he's had an extremely, extremely good camp. And I was really happy to see Zach embrace the competition part of it and go out there and earn it. And he absolutely did that during the course of camp. And, uh, you know, the way that Tyler Palka is such a good kid, the way he's accepted it and, and how, his, how he came out to practice the other day, you know, he knows his, his opportunity to get on the field is going to happen. And, uh, you know, they're, they're both great kids. And we have to find a way to get our best on the field. And both of them will play at some certain point in time, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, it's up to Coach Hoig and how the game goes. Is one a better passer and a better runner? Or are they both pretty equal in both yeah, it, Jimmy, if you ask our kids, they're going to say, say, tell you they're identical. And I think that the fact that Tyler, Tyler is coming into the program when Zach had about a year and a half and, and two years to study under Liam, you know, it really helped Zach out. But... You know, we have all the confidence in both of them, but I, we, to this point we think that Zach had a little bit better camp than Tyler, so he's going to go out there and get the football. All right, you know, Liam Nadler is a big loss. Brock Jones running back, what's that position looking like? Tailback, I think we're extremely deep. I, I think in the years past we had Jansen Jones, Brock Jones. I think now, you know, Tyler Johnson's came into his own over the last two years. Northeast product. Absolutely. And uh, we, we took a kid from Finley, Marcus Jones, who's a bigger physical kid. That's a change-up back. You know, he's, he's 6'1", about 235, 240 pounds. 
And then we got a, a freshman, Isaiah Young, who has just lit it up during camp. So I think we got three very capable kids that all bring something different to the table for us this year from a tailback standpoint. So rotations and, and getting all those kids on the field, and it's going to be important for us this year. What about receivers? Yeah, you know, we lose Ham. Um, you know, we're going to move Eli Quinter out of the slot position out to X for us. Um, so that's a, that's a good one for us. Um, we get quad law back, which is extremely important for us to have that speed in the slot, you know, to be able to do the things, catching those short routes and turning the five-yard gain into a 75-yard gain. Brandon Manziel's back. I think people hadn't seen Nico Law, Quad Law's brother. Um, he, was, he didn't play for us last year, so he's ready to go. He also can play some tailback, but he's, he's playing in the slot right now for us. And then BK's back, Brendan Klemenzik. Everybody knows BK. He's Mr. Consistency, and we need a big play. It's normally where we go. And then Richard Mikowski, our German player, has had a great camp and, and has really progressed really far. So we're, we're pretty stacked at receiver right now. We're excited about that group coming back. Offensive lineman, was it a concern going into camp, and where are you with the OL? Yeah, you know, I'm transparent, Jimmy. I tell, I tell everyone, you know, it, it's a concern with where we were up front. I think it's helped. Uh, I think Brady Bowling started as a true freshman for us at center. I think his natural position's out of tackle, and we moved him out there, and he's really, really looked good. Uh, Matt Hackathorn is one year better playing right tackle for us. Uh, we, we took a, a, a junior college kid, Charlie Long, out of California, who gave us more girth up front, who's really, really done a good job understanding our offense and commanding and calling out the Mike linebackers and all the things at center for us. And then Andrew Pearson, the Canadian net for us, stayed here this summer, really worked on his body and making himself physically fit to play, and he's ready to go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the other guard was a question mark for us, and, and we, we were really happy with the rotation part of it that we had there. Um, we had we had some kids come back in great shape that were able to compete. So I think our offensive line through camp ended up being one of our, our strengths as opposed to a concern for us right now. But um, you know we, we couldn't be happier. You know, Peaches is a kid that we're playing at, at right guard that you're going to see is a, is a physical kid. Um, we were really happy the way he came back from uh, summer and, and competed for that position and won it outright when camp ended. So we're happy with where that offensive line's at right now. Talking with Brad Ryzicki, Gannon University football coach, your pet uh, area, the defense. Uh, what were the questions going into camp and, and where are you at? Yeah, it's, uh, you're going to see a, 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 the same scheme on the field, I, I think, but you know, a little bit of a different talent. We're taller than we've been in the past. I think a lot of it is the skill behind it's just more experience, like Foster Resner. AJ, AJ Satcher was out there corner for the first time as a true freshman last year. He's more experienced in the system. Uh, the, you know, Loopy Coles is a kid that we brought in from Wheeling Park who's going to compete at corner. And then, you know, Christian Carpenter, a kid that, that wasn't eligible for us last year, is going to replace our free safety position. He's got one year left. He's a very skilled athlete. Um, uh, Justin Brown was a kid that played as a true freshman last year, is playing for our field side safety. And then, you know, our stable mate, Mike Xanders is back, and I don't know that I've coached a better kid from an intellectual standpoint and a physical kid than Mike Xanders. He understands the game as about as any kid, as good as any kid that I've ever coached in my life. And now being over there and seeing him on a day-to-day -day basis, he's special. Um, we'll be different at linebacker. Jeremy Page, Ant Howard. You know, there's there's two kids, Nate Adams and Jay Bullock. They're, they're still competing for that Mike position, so we're pretty happy there. I think we're going to be faster than we've been in the past, and. Having Max Onye back at nose guard helps, and, and Matt Golick and Andrew Berger, people haven't seen yet, and, and they're going to see him this year. He's a good one for us. So we're happy. You know, they're inexperienced, but they're talented. So we're, I'm excited to see him like everybody else on Saturday to let these kids go out and play. At this stage, would you look for your offense or defense to have to carry the team? I think we're more balanced. You know, we leave these scrimmages that we had during camp, and as a head coach, you sit there and you go, you want success on both sides of the ball. I'm on the defensive side coaching the corners right now, so I spent more time over there. But I, I swear, Jimmy, it's gone back and forth every scrimmage we've had, and you see pluses on both sides of the ball where I don't think we're so heavy on one side. I think in the past, everyone looked and said, hey, this offense is leading the PSAC in this category, and the defense is going to have to hold up, and we're going to try to outscore them. I don't think, now this can all change when we line it up on Saturday, that there's one side of the ball that is extremely more farther ahead or better than the other. I think this is the most balanced we've been to this point since I've been the head coach. All righty, and then speaking of Saturday, I love openers, fired up for that. Um, Southern Connecticut, always a tough game for you. He's got one in the you know close contest last year. What do you think from Southern Connecticut? Will they be doing anything different uh, personnel-wise or anything? 
Well, I don't, we exchange it too deep every year with Southern Connecticut, and I know Tom Godick's going to watch this. And last year we were surprised that two defensive kids weren't on the depth chart. We're probably the two best kids that play defense against us. So I kind of take their too deep and throw it in the garbage and say, hey, guys, just <laughs> expect whatever shows up here. Schematically, people change in the offseason. So I, I, I'm not a big proponent of spending much time on what they did last year, and we need to get back to basics for the most part. We could see – you know anything last year their offense was extremely different than the year before and we had to get used to it with our defense on the field it's always been a close game they've got a lot of seniors and a lot of kids with playing experience um, which we don't and that's the fact of the matter so it'll be a good test for us i think they're a really good ball club and they i think they won their last four out of five games last year they played us i think it was 26 20 we got out of there last year which i think was a, was a we had a good ball club last year especially early on in the season before our injuries you know kind of kind of took over our team but yeah it's going to be a test for us i think you know this year we're going to get better from game to game i'm interested to see how we come out you know what mistakes we make our learning experiences i expect us to get better but this will be an absolute big test for us on saturday brad is it exciting as a coach you know maybe a little worrisome with new kids, but also exciting to develop them and see how they're going to perform. This has been probably my favorite camp that we've had because they're so eager, Jimmy. And we've done this for five years. And I said, you know, building a culture was the big part of what we were trying to do. Well, that part of it's over. So these kids that are all going through this only understand and know a team that wins football games, wins more than they lose. So I think the expectations, you don't have to dig into these guys. They give you effort constantly. They, they make their mistakes, but they see that as learning lessons because that's what we push through them and they get better. You don't have to coach them twice. And they're eager to get out there. They know it's their turn. They've been watching this thing from the sidelines and special teams, you know, for either one or two years. And now they understand it's their turn, and they know they got to put the work in. So it's been an easy camp from a coaching standpoint because it's been fun. There is no entitlement on this team, and they are hungry. So that's been, for the entire staff, we sat collectively and talked about this on a week-to-week -week basis, that this group is a low-maintenance, fun-to-coach, can't wait to go watch them team. And that's, extreme, that's extremely important that we built that culture, and it's going to be fun to watch them. With a lot of new players, and especially the quarterback, do you have a plan? You'd be quick with the hook. Uh, you'll see how the game's going. Are, are you going to let them know they've got to hold the position they won? Yeah, well, I, I think in certain situations, you know, but with the quarterback position, I think you need to let Zach go out there. And, you know, he's he plays on a lot of emotion and, uh, you know, he, he's going to make his mistakes. And I told him this the other day, but mistakes are learning lessons and he can't sit there and worry about someone yanking him out of the game because he makes mistakes. It's just not fair to the kid. So I want him to play aggressive. That's his style of football. I want him not to turn it over because that's the whole deal with you know, we don't want to turn the ball over ever, but it's going to happen. And how he reacts to that, he can't worry about a coach sitting there yanking him out of the game. That's not what we're going to do. I mean, we're going to ride and, and let these kids make their mistakes. We call them mistakes. We call them more learning lessons, Jimmy, as long as they don't do it twice or they learn from it. And that's what you get from an inexperienced team. That's what we're looking at. In a perfect world, how many uh, players would you redshirt this year? Well, we're going to play quite a few of the, the ones we brought in. You know, this is going to be a little bit different because, you know, we're, we're not long in the teeth like we were in the past. We graduated 18 seniors. There's some kids that are physically ready to come in. I think collectively, you know, we're looking about 12 to 13 red shirts this year, where in the past we've been about 20. So a lot of those guys are in the mix on special teams right now, and there's some true freshmen that are rotating. We have a plan for them rotating in offense or defense as the game goes on. All right, Gannon Coach Brad Rizicki, I just can't wait till Saturday, my favorite time of the year. We'll be talking to you after the game at the Gannon Coaches Show at Molly Brannigan's. Yeah, can't wait for it, Jimmy. Brad Rizicki.